Long simmering tensions with Tehran reaching a whole new level as Iran's president vows revenge after a U.S. airstrike kills a top Iranian general. Waleed Ferris is a Fox News national security and foreign affairs analyst and joins us now. Waleed, good morning to you. Good morning. Um, thank you for being here this morning. We have spoken together a lot leading up to these events. Your thoughts yeah. now that it has happened? Let me begin with the end of the analysis and we'll work it up the other way around. This is not a U.S. war against Iran. As many are talking about in Washington and other capitals, it would look different. What is happening now is a U.S. counterterrorism operation against the Iranian network known as the Quds Force, which has been at war against our positions for the last many weeks and maybe months. Yes, there is a history of, Salem, uh, of, of Soleimani, Qasem Soleimani, taking action against U.S. interests, individuals, diplomats, military, goes back to 2003. But the action of yesterday is not linked to that. It's basically because he and his organization and his allies were preparing a campaign targeting our forces, diplomats, and other U.S. citizens. So it is very limited in the scope. And it really, at the end of the day, depends on Tehran. If they want to escalate, if they want to respond, and bring that war closer to them, that's their decision. It's not the, This is an interesting decision. point because the, the general consensus, as you point out, Waleed, is, is that we are on the verge of another war in the Middle East. Fareed Zakaria was on CNN saying we appear to be entering into another Middle East war. But history may tell us a different story. Uh, back in the 1980s, when President Reagan sank a third of the Iranian Navy in Operation Praying Manus. The Iranians basically went back into their hole for the next decade and decided they would wait and play another day. What's the chance that there's some rhetoric from the Iranians, maybe a cyber attack here or there, a bunch of parades, a bunch of chants of death to America, and then they take the message that they don't want to pay the cost of the next uh, escalation? First, for the criticism, uh, my friend. Number one, many of the analysts do not actually understand how the Islamic Republic of Iran function, have not understood this since 1979. That's one point. The second point, basically, is that Iran knows that if it's going to engage in a warfare against us, it will have to move troops into Iraq. And that's something they don't want to do. They don't have the technology to preempt on us. So they don't want the larger war. What they're trying to do is those strikes against us to force us to make one decision, which is to remove ourselves from Iraq so that they can handle the uprising. And in my view, humble view, I think the uprising is what is more dangerous to them than our forces. They are concerned that there is a people in Iraq going and burning the headquarters of their militias, that there are people in Iran itself who are shaking off the foundation of their regime. Mm. So they are trying to make a war with us so that they can go back and repress their Su own population. We're not working Suleimani with this. was an interesting figure, and we use the past tense now, in Iran. Folk hero in a way, almost like Patton was in terms of being a, a military leader, a politically very in tune and answered only to the Ayatollah. But there was this from the New York Times today, quote, Suleimani was treated like royalty and was not particularly hard to find, said Mark Palamopoulos, a former CIA operations officer. Suleimani absolutely felt untouchable, particularly in Iraq. He took selfies of himself on the battlefield and openly taunted the U.S. because he felt safe in doing so. Does this targeted killing, which is what it was, change the dynamics for not only your two-bit terrorists, but your terror leaders and even your quasi-government officials of terrorist countries? Let me try to rectify the description. It's true. He was very relaxed with his entourage, took selfies. It's well known in the Middle East. But what the analysts are not realizing is that when he walked, he had a, about 100 to 200 bodyguards around him. Any space he walked through to do these photo ops, video ops, were secured. It's not that he went into unsecure areas. He, he never met with the demonstrators, unarmed demonstrators of Iraq. So yes, I agree with your second point, is that from now on, Quds Force or other Iranian uh, terror organizations and entities are going to be extremely careful about how they move because of this high tech that the United States has, which, which has not been there for the last decades. Well, Lead, I want to finish with a, a tweet from the president today. This uh, this from President Trump at 9 o'clock Eastern time, less than two hours ago. General Qasim Soleimani has killed or badly wounded thousands of Americans over an extended period of time. And the general has killed or badly wounded thousands of Americans over an extended period of time, was plotting to kill many more, but got caught. He was directly and indirectly responsible for the death of millions of people, including the recent large number, was plotting to 
to kill many more, but got caught. He was directly and indirectly, obviously we're repeating some things here, I'll move on. While Iran will never be able to properly admit it, Soleimani was both hated and feared within the country. They are not nearly as saddened as the leaders will let the outside world believe. He should have been taken out many years ago. To that point, to the president's point about the timing of this, knowing the intelligence that we had today to take him out and that we had then. Why now and not in the past? Look, Soleimani's resume, bloody resume, is very large, very long, just against the United States, its allies, but also against the Iraqis. We forgot about the Syrians. Half a million people killed. Many thousands were killed by his troops. But the decision, I, I think, and I'm assuming the decision to take him out yesterday and in that fashion had to do with an operational information that he was about to organize or he was organizing a campaign against us which would have cost a lot of american blood and allied blood mm. all right waleed ferris appreciate your time this morning thank you